Hi there, Steve Perkins again, uh, the cooking buff from the Muscle Kitchen, and I have my uh, my kitchen assistant here. This is Sir Ralter Rowley. We call him Rowley instead. He's Rowley. <laughs> As one of the rare times, I let him up on the counter because obviously there's no food up here, but he's uh, probably looking for attention more than food right now. Anyhow, if you're looking for information about um, uh, food and how to eat right. And this is part of my video series called Eat Like You Mean It. Um, and it's, um, it's just almost everything I've been doing for so many years uh, and learning about why I do this thing and how it works and why, why it works so well. Um, and people have been asking me forever, what do you do to look so good at your age? Very humbly, I thank you very much for these compliments. Yes, I am um, uh, older than <laughs> dirt. 68 years old, and um, maybe there's some genetics in it that has have helped. I can't deny that, but um, I've been tenacious about eating smart and doing smart stuff for the longest time, and, and so does Raleigh. He eats really well, too. Um, today's episode is about spices and herbs, and they're quite valuable medicinally. It's not just about flavors and tastes. Um, so many medicinal properties of spices and herbs as the original medicines, besides essential oils. So it's uh, to be recognized and honored in its fashion. Um, and I have a huge, I have a huge drawer of. <laughs> I'll show you my my drawer of herbs and spices and stuff. Um, but I'm. But I'm focusing on several right now, the big ones. Uh, I don't want to make a huge long video about this, but I do want to mention the, the main ones. I don't have any licorice with me right now, but black licorice, the real licorice, not the red candy sticks that you buy. This It's not even decent candy. This is just corn syrup and food coloring and nasty stuff. So you don't want to be doing red licorice if you think that's healthy candy. You're crazy. The black licorice is slightly better if it's a real, real licorice source, but since that they'd be able to fake the licorice flavoring, so I don't even bother with it too much anymore. But the amazing things, and I'm going to make sure I read my notes here so you, I get everything accurate. There's so much I can't retain in my head. Licorice buffers the inflammatory response. Good for inflammation. By increasing the steroid output by your adrenal glands, a good buffer if your immune system is over-responding to the flu. Licorice if you got the flu. Amazing. Um, um, something we all probably have in our, in our kitchens. Let me get over here. The... Um, this is my own pepper mill. Black pepper is what we're going to talk about next. And um, here's black peppercorns. Whenever you're buying herbs and spices, don't cheap out. Um, very often the more um, high quality spices and herbs and seasonings um, are pricey. And you buy a small quantity don't hang on to it for more than a year or something in your in your cupboard, uh, in your pantry because they do age. And so don't think you've got. I haven't used this for three or four years, and I'm just going to try it. You'd better just toss it out and start over because it's not going to be pure. It's not going to be fresh, and it's uh, probably going to be aromatized or aerated, and it's not going to have the mojo that you're looking for, flavor as well as the medicinal properties. What am I talking about black pepper for? Well, <clears throat> some people don't like black pepper. They just haven't developed a taste for it, but I do it for that. Plus, let me read my notes here, and this is I, re I refer to Dr. Joseph uh, Marcola, who is um, one of my gurus, one of my respected guys that I go to when I have questions and I need more expert advice with a lot more clinical um, analysis behind these statements. And so he's one of my main guys that I go to. Someday I need to meet you, Dr. McCullough. I think we could have a great conversation. 
Anyhow, um, black pepper increases the bioavailability of just about all other foods, including herbs and other components, some other compounds. So it's not just the flavor, but sometimes our taste buds tell us a lot that we don't quite mm, understand. When, when I started eating more organic and pure foods consistently and more exclusively after several years, I realized I could actually depend upon my taste buds for things that would I needed. Like if I really, if I was starting to feel like I was getting a, a cold or a throat or phlegm or sinus, you know, all that stuff that goes on. Um, I would try different things and then my taste buds would go, oh, that tastes really, really good to me. And that's what I really actually needed and, and it worked when I for instance I was when I was, as a kid I got a terrible terrible flu I had a lot of fevers when I was a kid uh, infant you know like I'm 10 years old and be, and beneath younger um, terrible fevers I wouldn't even be able to recognize my mother and I was speaking foreign tongues and <laughs> it was a crazy thing uh, Still don't know the answer or why, but I know, remember one time that my mom, um, this is back in the day when frozen foods just started happening, and it happened to be, I was sick in my bedroom, feeling miserable. My mom, for some reason, brought in some cooked frozen spinach, frozen spinach that had been cooked. It tasted amazing to me, and I kept asking for more, and of course, they were, you know, it was all gone. There, um, she just gave me what was left, just a small little bowl, but it tasted so good to me. Spinach, I swear to God. Um, but that's exactly what my body was craving at the time, and my taste buds were signaling that's what my body really, really needed. Um, and the phytonutrients of spinach, and frozen spinach is one of the good frozen things because it captures all the nutrients right away. Wow, am I digressing again or what? <laughs> um, Pardon me, this started out with black pepper. <clears throat> but let's go on, let's backtrack. So just I, my taste buds are my friends, now not my enemies. I can trust them to a point if I'm not polluting them with all kinds of crazy, crazy manufactured processed foods and impure foods. Okay, black pepper, great. Let's go on to turmeric. Turmeric is one of my favorite topics. I love turmeric. <clears throat> turmeric is the uh, essential compound in... Um, Curcumin, and so this is a this is my I keep this on my countertop when I just dash this on eggs and everything. Turmeric is beautiful, beautiful bright orange color. Um, I buy organic uh, 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 turmeric and curcumin in bulk. Uh, it's the best way to do it. It costs a lot of money, but you you don't use that much. Um, <coughs> pardon me. The best way to take turmeric is in, a, in the uh, in a tincture form like this. And so this has been well used. Um, I put a couple of drops in my smoothie every day, um, several drops it's sometimes, especially if I'm kind of feeling low or if it's really cold out or there's a lot of stuff blowing in the air, stuff like that. Turmeric is a, a beautiful thing to treat, uh, to help your immune system. It has high antioxidants, which is killer. In fact, it has, um, I'm reading my notes here for Dr. Mercola. Turmeric is five to eight times stronger than vitamin C and E, and even strong enough to scavenge the hydroxyl radical, which is considered by some to be the most reactive of all oxidants. Major stuff, major stuff. Um, oregano. Oregano. Um, yeah, most of us have that in, our, you know, in the dry form, you know, and... You know, yeah, you get some of the flavor, but you don't really get the medicinal properties of the real thing. Um, and that's why, again, let me see if I can find it. Um, oil of oregano. This is this, this essence. We, I did a whole segment on oils, essential oils, and it's, uh, oil of oregano is a big one. Again, a huge, huge uh, prop, uh, anti antioxidants and... Um, if the active agent is rosemarinic acid, who knew? Um, good stuff. Let me work on down the list here. Um, 
you probably have a bunch of this in your in your cabinet. <laughs> I can't open this bag. <clears throat> nutmeg is fascinating. Nutmeg is uh, has antibacterial properties. Um, it can significantly reduce certain strains of E. coli. Beneficial for joint pain and gout. The oil, uh, nutmeg oil has traditionally used to treat toothaches. These are old timey stuff that still work today. Um, your doctor doesn't know anything about them. Your dentist doesn't know anything about them. So they're going to say, no, no, no. We want to give you lots of fluoride treatments. I'm always like, no way. I'm not going to push that nasty stuff in my body again if I can avoid it. Um, spices and herbs are fascinating. Uh, ginger. This is real ginger. This is ginger root. Um, I throw this into my, uh, my extra, uh, vegetable juice extractor. I have a, extract vegetable juice almost every other day. Maybe five times a week if we're really good about it. Um, but that, uh, it's, ginger is amazing. It actually increases your circulation. Um, when I lived in, a, in Colorado and I was out in the mountains all the time, especially in the wintertime, I would increase my ginger uh, intake because it increased my circulation. There's nothing like having warm fingers and toes in the wintertime. <clears throat> um, the powdered ginger that comes in a jar doesn't have nearly the impact and the potency that good old raw ginger has in its, um, this looks fascinating and wonderfully gnarly. This is really, this is, uh, you can find organic ginger root too, so you know that you're getting uh, the real stuff. Let's see what else I was going to say. Oh, let's move on to something else. Uh, oh, well, I was going to say ginger uh, also is um, calmative to your stomach. It uh, boosts your immune system, but it also relaxes and soothes the in intestinal tract. That's why it's uh, good for digestive problems. If you're having a sour stomach, you might try somehow getting some ginger into your body. Again, the raw ginger is the best way to do that because you can blend it up and control how you, um, how you, how you ingest it. Um, <sighs> oh, warm fingers and toes. Something I used to do in Colorado all the time when I was skiing and, and snowshoeing in, in particular because your feet are getting very, you're being very active. So very often your, uh, your body's sweating at the same time you're in like very cold weather. So it's important to keep dry and warm at the same time, even though your body's like doing all kinds of physical activity. It's a crazy phenomenon. But I would put a tiny bit of, I'm almost out, cayenne pepper, red cayenne pepper. This is organic cayenne pepper. I put a tiny, just a tiny pinch into my socks. Oh, sometimes between the, you know, in my shoes, in my boots, and that alone would keep my toes warm. While wow, skiing and snowshoeing, how delicious is that? But you tube it too much in there and you're going to regret it because it's going to be too warm and that's, that's not what we're after. Um, so many other things to talk about. Um, antimicrobial, antimicrobial benefits of cinnamon, real cinnamon. There's all kinds of bogus sorts of cinnamon. Make sure you get the very, very high quality. Um, it needs to be from um, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and, and all. Or, uh, and it's, but there's very different qualities of cinnamon, so do some research. I've tried to put this up on my website as well about cinnamon. I don't want to belabor it, but there's antimicrobial properties of cinnamon, antioxidant defenses, um, let's see, that's anti-inflammatory compounds uh, in, in cinnamon that is great. Stiffness of muscles and joints are affected. Ugh. So if you've got arthritis, you know, try to get the very, very high quality, pure, pure cinnamon. Um, some, some people, they get cinnamon from the roots and the leaves, and it still qualifies as cold cinnamon, but it's not the same thing as pure cinnamon bark, and that's really where the, the medicinal properties exist. Um, so cinnamon's also good to prevent urinary tract infections, tooth decay, and gum disease. But only the pure, real cinnamon will do that for you. Um, geez, because there's so many things. That, this is a huge, huge topic, and I've always gone on for 15 minutes about it. Um, 
peppermint is an also amazing uh, irritable bowel syndrome, prevent growth of bacteria and fungi, can help relieve the symptoms of allergy and asthma. Peppermint. Again, grow your own peppermint if you can. Peppermint oil will do the same thing if you're lucky enough to be able to find this. Um, good things. There's so many more spices, uh, spices and herbs that I could be talking about, but I just want to give you the, the tip of the iceberg here because this is an important topic. Um, as much as important as eating real, pure, organic, non-GMO, messed up, unprocessed foods. Um, any questions more? Ask me more about this stuff. I'm um, happy to help as much as I can. Um, big, big subject about eating right and eating smart, and you can do a lot of stuff for yourself, being proactive about your health and your, just by your kitchen. <laughs> what you put in your refrigerator, what you put into your body, and how you cook foods and how you don't cook foods also. Um, the Muscle Kitchen covers a lot of this. Um, I'm trying to revamp the website more all the time so it's a much more valid source. Um, I'm all about adding valid substance to the internet. Um, I come back from the day when the internet was just a brand new thing and people would just put garbage up just to to see if it worked, and so <laughs> there was a lot of misinformation there. There still is, of course, but uh, my mission is to, to do the, the right thing and put the most valuable information there about nutrition, about diet and health and how to be the best you can be and take care of yourself and um, be smart. Um, there's a lot of misinformation we get from the marketing and promotion to people from uh, the drug industries and even the food industry is full of profiteering. They just don't really have the moral sense to care about if it's really good for the populace or for your body. So it behooves us to be smart and aware and to learn and learn and learn about, about what the facts are. Um, so it's about trust. And so hopefully I'm engendering a bit of that in you. That's my mission here to, is to become more and more a viable resource for valuable truth information about diet, nutrition, food, and health, and stuff like that. Um, my office assistant has left the room. Raleigh is nowhere to be found. He got bored, so sorry. You'll have to come back for another segment. Again, this is Steve Perkins for the Muscle Kitchen, the Cooking Buff, and uh, signing off for now. Bye.